Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a Falcon Northwest Talon AMD Ryzen 7000 edition. In fact, this actually has the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X processor, which 16 cores, 32 threads. But of course, that's not the biggest feature of the system because it also has a little STH logo here, which I think is super cool. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Now, of course, the real reason that we're here is I wanna talk about the platform. I wanna talk about the performance, power consumption. I wanna talk about some of the just kind of new features because I think the new features, you know, folks are really, really focused on things like Cinebench numbers, but there are definitely a lot of features in here that I think are gonna be interesting to folks. And I think that it's gonna actually revitalize a portion of the market. And I wanna talk about why. I also. Just want to kind of show you around this really cool Falcon Northwest build because frankly this thing looks a lot better than if I built a PC myself and I think that's the entire point. Now I do want to point out that Falcon Northwest did send us a system and one of the things that they wanted to show off was not just the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X but they also wanted to show off some of their capabilities and one of those big capabilities is the ability to customize the system and so you're going to see the system next to me on the translucent cover you're going to see that there's the little STH logo printed here but on the metal Metal panels that are on either side. We have a you know alternate for this as well. We do also get the STH logo. Personally, I thought it was super cool, so I said, yeah, let's go do it and show that capability off. And so that's why you're going to see that. But as normal, we're doing our standard editorially independent review. They're not paying us for this review. They don't get to review it beforehand. We're just going to do this just like any other content piece that we do on the site. We just want to show off the logo. So if you're wondering how you can support our editorially independent reviews, something that you can do is join our channel. You'll see the little join button below. And if you want to do that, that will totally help us out and help us do things like go buy systems like the little systems and networking gear and just some of the kind of cool tidbits that we review on YouTube that totally will help us and that's exactly what we're going to use those membership dollars for. You might have also noticed that this is a different set than we have been using for like the last year and change and that's totally true. Once we hit 100,000 subscribers I said hey we should go have somewhere for a play button. I'm kind of thinking maybe over there and I just wanted a new set so that's what we have here. Still lots of work to do but I did want to point out that while I'm doing this just to kind of give you an idea of how quiet this system is this system is actually rendering the rest of the video in 4k in adobe premiere while i'm sitting here speaking to you and this is a uh, uh, sennheiser uh, mkh 416 so it kind of gives you an idea of is only a couple feet away and it is absolutely it's definitely not completely silent but it is definitely quiet enough that if you have it under a desk or if you're in an office where there's some background noise you're definitely not going to hear it so i think that overall falcon northwest did a really good job on the noise on this one especially with the cooling with that, let's get to the rest of our review. Okay, so kicking off this review, let's look at the top of the system. Here, you'll see two USB type A ports, one type C port, and then you also see a headset jack. I just wanna note really quick that Falcon Northwest, I think a lot of folks know them for making gaming PCs, but they are transitioning into making things that are like kind of more like professional workstations and what have you. And so one of the big things that you need in that kind of market is having a lot of IO, and that is definitely something that we're gonna see in the system, because this has it, this is definitely a big step up from what we've seen previously. On the front of the system, you're gonna notice that we have the Falcon Northwest RGB light up logo. And I'll just say all of the RGB in this actually lit up when I got it and turned it on. It was actually in blue and I thought that was super cool. I don't know if that was on purpose or if it was for STH, but I just kind of thought it was really cool. And if it was for STH, that'd be an awesome little attention to detail. But the reason it might not be a coincidence is that you can see that we have the STH logo on the transparent panel on the side. And that's just part of what these guys can do because we also got this panel and you can hopefully Hopefully see that this panel comes with the STH logo on it. Now, if you're sitting here and saying, hey, that costs extra money, I don't wanna spend the extra money because I'd rather go get a faster processor, more RAM, something like that, that's totally okay. You just have to kind of select that. And if you really wanna pay for it, then you can definitely go do that. I'll just really also note real quick, I'll just kind of show you this open up real quick. So you just open this, it's a really nice, super easy action just to go and open this thing up. And once the chassis is open, you can see all the kind of cool things that we have in here. And so let's just kind of go through what the hardware components are in the system, right? This has an Asus, ROG Crosshair X670E Hero. Oh my gosh, that's a long name for a motherboard, but it has a ton of features on it. And so this is using the X670E chipset. It's not using the kind of like lower end B-series chipset. This is really the higher end one that AMD offers. Here we have our Kingston memory. We also have our 
all-in-one liquid cooler, which is the Falcon Northwest liquid cooler. We have a GPU, and in the system, because we're doing this uh, a little bit earlier uh, than, than the next generation is launching, we actually have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, but it can at least support the higher-end GPUs of this generation. I will just note that we did uh, really quickly, uh, we had another system with a A6000 in it, and we did actually put the NVIDIA RTX A6000 in the system. We also put in the A4500, which is a GPU that we reviewed previously. PNY had sent us that GPU and we had it. So I was just like, you know, that is an option that you can get in here. And so we did try it out and they totally worked no problem. If you can cool a 3090 Ti, you can clearly cool some of the kind of lower power professional GPUs. And so we did test it out and those are options. Now for memory in the system, we're using the Kingston Fury DDR5 5600 units. Now, AMD says that they can go up to like DDR5 uh, 6000 is like the sweet spot, but that kind of seems like that's more of kind of, kind of more top end of the systems that you see with Ryzen 7000 come with. AMD is also pushing its AMD Expo for its memory overclocking. So while we usually test at uh, JEDIC standards, this is gonna be, uh, you know, just the system comes with higher performance memory than you get just kind of stock. You can see here that we have two slots filled. So we have 232 gig DIMMs, which means we have 64 gigabytes total. You could of course put four in and then get a total of 128 gigs if you want. We're also using a two terabyte Kingston M.2 SSD, which is covered under all of the motherboard heat sinks here. Now I do want to mention that all of this stuff is configurable. I mean, not just the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X, but also the motherboard, there are different options. There's also different options for capacity and speed for DIMMs and, and brands. You can also get things like, you know, this is the 3090 Ti, but pretty soon we'll have the GeForce RTX 4000 series. You may also want a professional card. There's all kinds of different options that you can get in a system like this. I will also note that Falcon Northwest does sell other versions of this that are not just the AMD Ryzen 7000 series. And so if you do want a different type of processor, well, you could get that in here too. One thing I have to say that I do really like about the system is the cable management. Now, when I go and I build a system, you'll definitely notice uh, when I do it because I get cables somewhat reasonably together and kind of bundled up and, and you know, put out of the way and stuff. But I'm frankly, definitely not the person that's going to go spend like eight hours, like, like resheathing cables and stuff like that, because I just don't have time to go do that. And so here, what you can see is that, well, Falcon Northwest actually has some really nice cable management. An example is this PCIe Gen 5 cable you can see going to the GPU here. You can also see that matches the ATX cable that's up here on the motherboard. And so just like kind of these little touches are definitely part of the nice bits about this Falcon Northwest system. Now, looking at the back of the system, you see a lot of really cool features. And I wanna just get into this a little bit because I think it's super important. The first thing that you're going to see in this Asus motherboard is the fact that of course we get Wi-Fi 6E. We also get audio as we would expect from a workstation type of motherboard, but then you get a ton of USB ports. There's something like 12 USB ports on the back of the system. And there's a mix of type C and type A. And the low speed that I think I saw on there was 10 gigabits per second. So that means that these are all at least USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, speed ports. And then it goes up from there. There's a type C port that also runs at 20 gigabits per second. And then there's three other type C ports. Now the first one or the bottom one actually is a 10 gigabit per second port. But you're gonna notice that there's a little display port output there too. We're gonna get to that in a second. Second. But the other two, they're actually 40 gigabit per second ports. And that is absolutely awesome. In fact, the USB speeds are now significantly faster than most of the onboard networking. The other thing though, and I think that'll be more important for a lot of the kind of target workstation users for this, is just that 40 gigabit per second port, that allows you to do things like pull data off of SSDs, you know, as faster SSDs come out to take advantage of that 40 gigabit per second port. That that really is a really good use case for like USB 4 and being able to, to kind of push higher data speeds through there. I mean, even like an STH video at this point is using, so I don't know, we probably generate somewhere between 100 to 200 gigabytes of data, just kind of as like a standard video size. And so just transferring all that, it takes quite a bit of time actually. And uh, you know, it usually takes a couple of minutes to just dump all the footage. And it would be nice if it was a little bit faster. And one of the things that gets you there is just having things like USB 4 and having 40 gigabit per second ports. So especially if you're gonna be using higher end cameras than we're using, then you know that would be a example of where you might want something like that. 
But let's get to that display port because the two USB 4 ports have display port as well. And there's also an HDMI port. And the reason that you're going to see all of this kind of cool stuff is because there are actually display outputs on the CPU itself. This is brand new for this generation of AMD Ryzen processors. And I think it is a huge deal. The new AMD Ryzen 7000 series has a GPU, has some, you know, RDNA GPU IP on the IO die. And what that means is that you get a display display, you can actually drive displays and you get things like a media encoding engine and stuff like that. Not necessarily a great one, but you get one that you can actually use directly off of the chip itself. You don't have to go to a GPU. Now, this is something that Intel has had for a long time. And I think a lot of our viewers have thought about things like Intel quick sync technology, but more important. And I think something that just kind of resonates with me more is that I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of the Intel systems that we set up and a lot of the reasons that we use some of the Intel systems is just because you don't need a GPU and having that integrated GPU is actually just kind of nice. Now, AMD does have APUs that have GPU IP, but those tend to be a little bit lower in the stack, not necessarily on their high end part. So this is the first time that we're really seeing that at the high end from AMD. And you might say, Patrick, why would you even care about such low performance graphics? And there's a good reason for that. The reason is simply that a lot of times we don't need GPUs on systems because if we're running like Ubuntu Linux or something like that, and you don't necessarily need a GPU for whatever you're trying to do, well, then just having a CPU and being able to hook up like a monitor key keyboard, mouse, all that kind of stuff, and then actually drive display outputs is super useful. The fact of the matter is that a lot of people use these types of systems to go and earn a living and they are not necessarily playing games on them. And if you don't necessarily need all of the GPU performance, then why would you have to go get a GPU? Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to even spend the money for it? And so a lot has been made about the pricing between the 7,000 series top end and the 5,000 series top end. But that's just something that, you know, to me is actually a huge value. And it's probably more than that hundred dollar or so difference is really just the, the difference in value of having that integrated GPU IP versus not. And plus you also get the median encoding engine. So I think that that's another thing that is really good on this. And it's super important when you talk about things like the new instructions in Zen 4. And since we're already talking about the Zen 4 platform, let me just give you a couple other really important thoughts in terms of what Zen 4 offers that you didn't necessarily get in the previous generation Zen 3. There are a number of improvements and I wouldn't say that, um, uh, you know, broad strokes, this is like a complete redo of the Zen architecture going from Zen 3 to Zen 4. What you do get is things like double the L2 cache, which as we've seen, you know, AMD G CPUs do very, very well with a lot of cache. So getting uh, more cache is, is kind of important, especially if it's the L2, because that's really fast cache. The other thing though that is super important is that we also get their AVX 512 which is implemented a little differently than Intel but still you get AVX 512 and you get things like bfloat 16 support and VNNI. Now both of those are features of Intel's third generation Intel Xeon scalable series. Bfloat 16 support was something that was put into Cooper Lake mostly because Facebook slash Meta decided they wanted it in their chips and that's why they had Intel add that to Cooper Lake. And then VNNI was a big feature in the Ice Lake generation of servers. VNNI is really focused on AI inference and we've actually done pieces where we've looked at the impact of VNNI on workloads like you know using it versus not for inference. It actually adds a lot without having to go to a GPU or a dedicated ASIC so it's super useful there. And while Intel is focused on acceleration, AMD with Zen 4 and the Ryzen 7000 series has features for especially AI acceleration and AVX 512 that are very similar to what Intel has on its third generation Intel Xeon scalable lines. Now of course in the future we would expect that we would see because you know, this is Zen 4. We'd expect this in things like Genoa, Siena, and Bergamo that we'll see from AMD on the data center side. We'll have more on Genoa later in Q4. So with that, well, let's get to that performance. Now, when we talk about performance, I want to bring in one of the friends of STH, Dr. Ian Cutris from Tech Tech Potato, because he had some thoughts on the AVX 512, and he was actually doing some benchmarking. He said, hey, why don't you go record a little piece and just kind of give some of our viewers just an idea of what you do and the performance of the Ryzen 9 7950X. With that, here's Ian. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for inviting me on. So Zen 4 on Windows on the desktop, I've had a play. Performance is very good, at least at the high end. What we're going to see is actually a lot of talk about the mid-range and low-end performance when you limit their power level. I know for the people that serve at home, they're more interested in how these cores will scale out to server type of power limits. Now, I've done some testing at 142 watts and 65 watts, and again, the performance is very competitive. You're getting better than previous generation's performance at the much lower power. I'm going to actually share a few graphs of at least, you know, peak to peak performance. First up, 
is something called Blender. Now, Blender as a rendering workload, I just use a, a, a standard workload from one of the previous editions here, and we're just simply rendering a frame, and it's the time taken to render. And as you see here, the Zen 4 base processor, the Ryzen 9 7950X, sits at the top of that stack. Going down, we've still got the 16 cores, and then uh, Intel's 8 plus 8 is just a little bit behind, and then we've got the 6 cores coming, coming behind that. Next up is uh, one that will actually be of interest to people who use AVX 512. Of course, Zen 4 now brings AVX 512 to AMD. It's a lot of the AVX 512 uh, instruction set. Not all of it, not all what Intel supports, but a good chunk of it. And Intel does this by essentially running double instructions through their FMA, two, FMA units, the 256-bit uh, units. And what this means is a very decisive win for AMD on the desktop parts. They are now the only competitors in this space, on the desktop at least, with processors that support AVX 512. Now, if the software supports it, that's another matter for consumers. In the server space, it's going to matter quite a lot. I'm going to be interested to see how the AVX 512 units on Sapphire Rapids react to AMD's implementation. I've actually gone through some of the in instructions and implementation of AVX 512. AMD is doing things a little bit differently um, at the decode stage of that core, not necessarily on the uh, FMA on the 256-bit units, but on, on the actually decoding those operations and they're maybe able to extract some efficiencies out of there in their micro-ops compared to Intel, which may require three micro-ops in order to do the same piece of work. That's going to be fun to see as it scales out to the workloads that can use AVX. Hope that's given you a little bit of taste of uh, what I do in my testing here on the desktop side, especially for Windows. Back to you. I just want to say thank you again to Ian for talking about all, all those kind of really great topics, including the fact that you could actually go and thermally limit some of these to lower TDP and you actually get really good performance on the Ryzen 7000 series. But what I want to talk about instead is just kind of what we saw. Now, a lot of the Ryzen 7000 series benchmarks that you've probably seen have been like kind of a lot focused on gaming. And that's actually why it took so long for us to get a system because AMD tends to send out these new chips to uh, their gaming sites instead of sending it to us. Uh, Intel will send us their their stuff early like we already have the 13th gen core sitting over there but AMD was a little bit slow in being able to get this and Falcon Northwest guys really helped a lot with that so you know we kind of look more at the professional side and uh, aside from what Ian was looking at I just want to kind of show you some of the things that we are just you know kind of seeing just generally here we are seeing absolutely excellent performance from the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X this CPU has pretty high clock speeds and we're often seeing clock speeds well over 5 gigahertz cooled in the system which is awesome we are seeing you know turbo frequencies over 5.7 sometimes. I mean, this is just, just an insane system. The other thing that I just want to point out is the fact that, um, you know, we do know that Intel is coming out with new chips pretty soon, but this is out today. And, and you know, frankly, we do get pretty darn decent performance numbers from this across a pretty wide range of applications that we tested. But I, what I also wanted to do is just kind of look at what happens when we pair this CPU with the NVIDIA GPU, because we actually have used a bunch of 3090s and TIs, and we also had the Alder Lake system set up with the same thing. And I just wanted to see, like, you know, what would happen if we start looking at some of the benchmarks that we use and we actually went and ran those benchmarks and the AI benchmarks with this system versus the Alder Lake system? And of course, I know somebody's going to say 13th gen Intel is coming. I know we just can't publish those numbers. So uh, we have to use Alder Lake. And what we saw on the AI side is actually with paired with this GPU, we definitely got good performance. Now, we can also show the RTX 4000 series, but with the RTX 3000 series, you do see that you get more performance with the AMD Ryzen processors and the Intel Core processors when we're doing AI with NVIDIA GPUs. We'll probably end up doing more on the AVX 512 and also VNNI side as we get into um, kind of more of our Genoa coverage and, and stuff like with that part of Zen 4. But suffice to say, I am super impressed overall with the performance of the system. Now, in terms of power consumption, this thing actually comes with a just beautiful Seasonic power supply. But the other side to it, and even with the 3090 Ti, I know that's in there and you know we have a pretty high TDP CPU, but this is frankly nowhere near things like the Threadripper Pro system with like multiple GPUs or really high-end GPUs, high-end NICs and all that kind of stuff. Through our entire benchmark suite, we actually never really hit like a one kilowatts or anything like that. So like this is actually a pretty, um, you know, mundane system, especially if you do have an office situation where you don't necessarily have a ton of power or maybe you have an office with like a 15 amp, 120 volt uh, circuit and you have to go run a couple of different systems on that. Uh, you know, this thing you can still run other things on. The one thing I do want to point out though that I think could be better on the system that I just wasn't a huge fan of is 
just the networking. And this is partly Asus's fault just for that motherboard and you know only having a two and a half gig ethernet port built in. But also just, um, you know, I, I would wanna configure some better networking in this than we have. I think having things like a Bluefield DPU or just, you know, just kind of higher speed devices that you could have here. I think that a lot of folks that will use a system, especially, you know, once you start using professional GPUs and things get a little bit more expensive. Um, you know, I, I just kind of think that this is one where I would have liked to have seen some custom options. I didn't see it on the configurator. Maybe you could call Falcon Northwest and they could figure that out for you. But it would just be something that, um, you know, two and a half gig wired ethernet is not necessarily fast these days. And if you did put a NIC in here, that's pretty much all you get. I mean, you have M.2 drives or M.2 slots for storage, but then you have a single, you know, a GPU that's giant here. And then you're going to get like, you know, one PCIe slot aside from that. And so just not that much connectivity to be able to go and put extra networking. And that's always, you know, kind of, or that's why I tend to gravitate towards the Threadripper Pro systems. At the same time, a lot of folks are going to be looking at the system say, I don't really use wired ethernet anymore. I use two, maybe two and a half gig ethernet. Sure, it's fine, but I'm pretty much going to be using that Wi-Fi 6E and maybe the Bluetooth 5.3 in the system mostly. I mean, you know, I, I know there are definitely folks that that's all they're going to want to care about and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I, I know that I do have a little bit different of taste when it comes to networking just because we do a lot of the high-end networking gear. Overall, the performance on this Falcon Northwest Talon AMD Ryzen system or Ryzen 7000 series system is awesome. The build quality is definitely better than anything I would do myself. I mean, even this case is, you know, probably a little bit thicker metal than a lot of the other cases that we see on here. And so overall, this is a very nice system to test. I know a lot of folks are going to look at this and say like, hey, that's not a cheap system. But also remember that Falcon Northwest is targeting things like Lenovo's ThinkStation brands and like Dell Precisions and like the things that are kind of the higher end, higher margin workstations from like the large OEMs. And instead of just kind of having a corporate looking box, they have something that looks a little bit more fun and you can have things like logos and stuff like that put on it. So it's a little bit different of a market than, you know, the typical gaming PC where you're just trying to get like the maximum performance per dollar. I mean, things like having the STH logo on the side are super cool, but they're not really adding any performance. And the one thing I do think though, is that if you buy this for, even if you own a business or something like this, and you buy this for one of your employees, they're definitely going to look at this and say like, okay, you know, my employer at least cares a little bit enough to say like, hey, we're going to go get you something that looks really cool aside from just, you know, performing well. I think that's also something that, you know, just that little cachet of having a cool system is something that Falcon Northwest is trying to capitalize on here. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the Falcon Northwest Talon system and specifically the one with the AMD Ryzen 7000 series or the Ryzen 9 7950X. This is an absolutely cool system and I hope you totally got to see all of the really great features and how this was put together. Now on SDH we're going to have a lot more on not just the AMD Ryzen 7000 series but also the 13th gen Intel Core series. We have some systems that we're just kind of finishing up on the smaller form factors that of course lag the new processors by a little bit. We'll have new GPUs. We're going to have all kinds of stuff coming on SDH. So if you have haven't already, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.